Welcome, my name is Morris. Um, I work at Coplay. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, my laptop that previously worked on this very same setup stopped working now. Um, but yeah, my talk is about building C++ or more specifically building C++ with CMake, our beloved build system. And um, uh, I'm doing this talk mostly because there are many anti-patterns around, uh, around when, when it comes to writing build scripts and CMake specifically. Um, but we should still care a lot about, about CMake because the, uh, the problem, uh, because um, yeah, this slide explains it all. Uh, <laughs> the situation is not good. So we have a fragmented ecosystem and we don't have a standard build system. Mostly we don't have a standard package manager, no documentation system and in the unit test framework. And if, if everyone just starts inventing new stuff, uh, just because all the previous things are bad, we're not going to go uh, to get anywhere. I can just reference that XKCD comments on standards. Um, so, fortunately or unfortunately, what you can see here is uh, the Google Trends graph of various build systems, so Ascons, Auto Tools, CMake, uh, and Mison. Mis putting Mison in there is probably a bit unfair because it's very new, but the point is that CMake is by far the most popular build system when, when I'm asking Google about it. Um, so the graph starts at 2010, and if you start at, say, 2005, it's, it gets even, it, uh, the effect is even stronger. So it was on, about on par with S, S construct about 15 years ago, and now it's just disappeared. Um, so even if we stop uh, writing CMake today, we still need to maintain it for a long time, yes. Is that including Visual Studio? Visual Studio. Uh, I didn't include Visual Studio there. It's also hard to measure. Um, maybe MS Build, but I guess people usually use Visual Studio instead of MS Build. Uh, is MS Build in there? Is it? No, uh, that's Ascons, CMake, Mison, AutoMake, and NuMake. Yes. It might also just suggest that CMake is the hardest to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's. <laughs> I don't share this opinion, <laughs> um, but it's it's, <laughs> it's probably the, the least bad. I can I guess we can agree on that. One of the least bad. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we somewhat ended up with CMake as our emerging standard build system for C++, and we should try to make the best out of it. And it's still better than two thousand different build systems, each one for a new one for each new project. So. What makes CMake so bad? Um, what you can see here in the background, it's a bit hard to see, is, is a typical build script. So we have calls like include directories here and then just find paths, path in the middle of your script. Uh, so the problem is that you have imperative code flow everywhere and developers don't seem to, to see that CMake code is real code. Uh, so CMake code can be tested, it can have documentation, and it has real control, uh, control flow statements, even though the language is maybe not the best. Um, the inheritance mechanisms, they do exist in CMake, but the developers usually don't use them. There are so, there's uh, so many projects out there where they're just juggling around global variables like they're developing in the 60s. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so in the packaging mechanism, which also exists in CMake, is usually unknown, so people don't really know how to deal with that. And the wiki did not make, uh, the, uh, didn't improve things. Uh, so most information on the wiki is, is outdated, and they, uh, they fortunately recently put a warning uh, on top of the wiki that you shouldn't trust information because it's outdated. <laughs> um, but yeah, for many years, people used this as a learning resource on CMake because it was hosted on Kit, where the wiki was accessible, it was the best that you could get. And if you just type in CMake tutorial, it shows up the first, as, as the first result. So it's obvious that it's an uh, important uh, resource. But in the recent years, um, there, is a, um, there is a new uh, set of patterns on CMake um, advertised called uh, modern CMake, and uh, in a nutshell, it means that all direct uh, that 
uh, you don't juggle around with global variables or um, uh, or set properties on directories or whatever. Uh, you create a directed acyclic graph of the targets you want to build. Um, and it's doable roughly since CMake 2.8.12, but uh, it's only really practical since CMake 3 because CMake 3.0 added a lot of syntactic sugar that makes this actually practical. Uh, so where to learn this? Um, one resource I can definitely recommend is Daniel Pepper's talk, Effective CMake from C++ Now 2017, which is a whole introduction um, to the language to enter patterns here, there, which are around. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend watching this talk. He also has a lot more time than I do. Um, and I can also recommend CMake build system on cmake.org. So they finally started writing something that is almost a tutorial because the, the other problem with CMake is that the documentation is just a reference. It's not something a new developer use, uh, uses or should use to learn about CMake. Uh, but there's no good, no good resource. And yeah, they finally started addressing this issue on CMake build system. Uh, and this talk will be just a very brief introduction. So I don't want to uh, reiterate everything Dino Piper has said. Um, and it's also a collection on, on uh, a few anti-patterns and how to avoid them. So yeah, let's start by getting CMake. So everyone knows that it's probably available on your systems, uh, Linux, uh, on your systems package manager. So if you're using Linux, you can usually say apt install CMake or whatever your distribution you use. But the problem is it's most, it's usually just uh, outdated. And if you want to use the most recent version of CMake, you have to compile it yourself, or you use pip and install CMake with pip. Uh, and the uh, Python wheel is even maintained by Kitware. So it's probably a good way to, uh, to get the most recent version of CMake onto your system. It's also available on Conan. So this is the package reference here. Uh, yeah, internally, I will do uh, a Conan <laughs> talk later this month. Uh, I'm not sure if I will do this at, at the Caesar group here. So I don't know if I will do a Kona talk in the future. Um, yeah. After that, after we got CMake and installed it, we can start with Hello World. So Hello World usually looks like, uh, like this. You have CMake minimum required. You set the minimum version that you have, version 3.12 in this case, which is the most current version. Then project, Hello World. So our project is called Hello World. You give your project and the version number. And your project contains an executable called app, which is built from the main.cpp. Um, and if we go through it line by line, CMake minimum required is the deprecation mechanism. So it not only sets the minimum version that you have, um, <coughs> that, you, that you need to build your project, it also um, set, uh, tells CMake on uh, which version to emulate. So, if I say write CMake 3.0 here, it behaves like 3.0, even though you have CMake 3.12 installed. And if they introduce a breaking change, it will continue to behave like CMake 3.0. This means that upgrading CMake is usually unproblematic. There are very, very few cases of actual breaking changes when you, have, when you don't modify the source code. If you upgrade your CMake, just don't raise this version, and you should be fine. So as an example here, uh, CMake version 2.5 allowed you to have multiple executables or targets with the same name. So I have two, two, two executables here, app and app, built from two different sources. Um, and I set the CMake minimum required version uh, to 2.5. This will cause CMake to continue to work and emulate version 2.5, but you will also get a warning that they removed it in CMake 2.6 for pretty much obvious reasons. Um, and if you raise this version of 2.6 here, you get a hard error here saying that the, what you're doing here is illegal. Um, but what if you still have this old code lying around and can't upgrade all of it to more on CMake? In this case, you can just say, I want to, uh, I want to use uh, CMake with 12 features in some of my code, but I'm also aware that I'm using deprecated behavior here. So I set this policy I got here too old. And this causes CMake to just add this 
this small piece of old and deprecated behavior to your otherwise new and shiny Steam Excel. And you can still write this. You don't get a warning anymore because you're explicitly said that you're aware that you're using outdated behavior. There's a whole list of all breaking changes that were added throughout the development of CMake available on CMake policies. So please upgrade your CMake, you should be fine. And yeah, I, I, I would really like to stop dealing with outdated version of CMake when I'm writing libraries because people don't want to upgrade for some reason. Um, after your CMake minimum, minimum required, you can set your project. Um, project mostly just sets some variables prefixed with a pro, uh, with a project underscore in here. Uh, things like project uh, project source dear binary dear and your version uh, numbers. And the reason you should do this and refer to those variables here instead of cmake source dear or binary dear is stuff like this. So your project might get included by another root project here, which you don't know about when you're writing your script. So when you're invoking CMake on your root project, CMake source deal will always point to the root project, whereas CMake pro whereas the pro project source deal will always point to the last call of your project uh, of, uh, of the project function. So when you want to refer to the root of your project, you should probably want to use product source deal. Otherwise, it will end up in your root project you don't know about, and things will break. Um, Note that this does not apply to CMA current source here, which just points to the current directory you, you script this in. So yeah, you can, uh, you can still use those. Uh, yeah, and analogous to source deer, there's binary deer and yeah. <coughs> After uh, we've written our hell world script, we can run CMake. Um, so one important part about CMake is that it's not a build system, but it's a build system generator which means that you can't tell CMake to build something. CMake generates something but that builds something. And in this case here, I tell CMake to generate a build system using the Ninja build tool. There are, there's a whole lot of different generators available and you can also just say, uh, just say I want to use the Visual Studio 2017 solution files with the Visual Studio 2015 compiler here. Um, after you have generated your build system, you may either invoke your build system directly by Ninja or Make or MS Build. Um, but you may also use cmake dash dash build dot and set a config and set a target. The advantage is that is, it is generator agnostic. So if you write something as say um, a continuous integration script, you may want to prefer writing cmake dash dash build in order to stay independent of your um, generator and this may simplify your scripts. Um, another aspect is that CMake will be implicitly re-invoked when you changed one of the configuration dependencies which include all the CMake lists. So um, you don't have to clear your cache or deleting everything or something like that just because you changed the CMake list. You can usually just call Ninja or Make and things will recompile uh, just fine. There are just very few exceptions and one of those is FileGlob. Who uses FileGlob? Who doesn't use FileGlob? Okay. Um, the problem with FileGlob is um, that CMake does the file globbing just once, writes in all the files in your make file, and just leaves it there. If you add another file, uh, CMake won't notice that. So you add another, you add another file, you just call Ninja like you always do, and then you get a sudden leaker error suddenly is saying that you have an undefined reference or something that's in your file. Uh, the reason is that, yeah, CMake just does not update the list because this will incur a performance penalty. Um, if you want to rescan your, all your globbing expressions, you have to call CMake explicitly. So this is the rare case when you want to call CMake dot and then make and not uh, and not just make. Um, this is slightly outdated. In CMake 312, they added the configure depends flag. See it from the CMake docs. Um, and this causes CMake to rescan every time you invoke your build system. 
which obviously has a performance penalty and it does not work for every generator. The downside is they also didn't say which generators don't work. <laughs> um, I assume Make and Ninja do. I'm not sure about Visual Studio. I would doubt that it would work in Visual Studio. Uh, but they don't say it, so I, I haven't tested it. Um, <laughs> the point is, even the CMake developers discourage you from using FileGlob to get, collect all your source files, even if you use configure depends, because it might, it might be inco incompatible with the new generator, or, um, or yeah, it just as a performance penalty. Um, you may use it, you may not use it, depends on your use case. Yeah, let's talk about targets. So I've already, you've already seen the add executable call. There are multiple different ways to define targets. So targets are things that are built or produce an output, and they're usually represented by Visual Studio projects and Ninja or Make targets. You can think of them basically like objects in your in your script. Um, you can define a new target with one of those three functions: add executable, add library, or add custom target. Um, when you create a target, uh, it is in initialized in a very special way. So an, a target inherits all the properties from the directory it is created in. It also inherits all the uh, property or all, all the default property settings that you set somewhere. So, so for example, CMake CXX generate is just sets a default value. Um, if we want to change the default, you use one of those functions here. So I hope everyone is familiar with target link libraries. Um, target source is slightly more exotic, but ex uh, it exists. Um, and those are the four functions that make that basically uh, make more and CMake, more and CMake. So this is the way how you uh, add properties to your targets and create uh, and attach just information on your node in your graph. Um, the special thing about those functions is that uh, they accept private, public, and interface arguments. This means that every inf every piece of uh, information that you attach on your node can be propagated to all the consumers, or it can be kept privately and will only be used um, during the compilation of the target itself. Uh, so private means we only this target will use this this piece of information. Public means this target itself and everyone that uses this target will have this information. Interface just means everyone that uses uh, everyone that uses target will have this information, but not the target itself. Um, under the hood, everything that happens is when you have a call like target compile definitions on mylib with a public definition, mylib some feature is that you set the target property compile definitions to mile up some feature and interface compile definitions to mile up some feature because it's public. If it was private, this line here would disappear. If it was interface, this line here would disappear. So the compile definitions this line. Um, yeah, so we've learned how we can attach information on a node. Uh, now we just need to create the edges between our nodes. And this, uh, the function we use for that is target link libraries. Um, this uh, tells CMake to propagate all the information uh, you attach on your properties. And it also uh, sets a build dependency order. So if you link target, uh, if you link target A into target B, target A must be, must be built, uh, built first. Um, so an example here. A uh, very simple example of how we build Compute CPP. That's totally how we do it. Uh, we have a library, Compute CPP, uh, where we don't ship our internal math library. Uh, but everyone who uses Compute CPP needs OpenCL in order to, to make it work. Um, we also require uh, Compute, CPP, uh, Compute CPP to be built um, with C++11 support, and everyone that uses C, uh, that uses Compute CPP or wants to use SQL code uh, needs to have C++11 enabled. So it's a public compile feature that we use uh, C++11. Another example uh, would be STB image. Who does not know STB image? 
everyone knows STB image? No, you. So STB image is just a single file uh, header only library for loading all kinds of image formats like JPEG and PNG. And yeah, it's very easy to use. Just copy the single one single file into your project or uh, you package it up in CMake like that. Um, so you can call add library on STB image. You say it's header only by saying it's an interface library, which means that it's a pseudo target. It's not really built. Uh, and we say it's imported because we don't actually build it. It's from somewhere else. So we don't own this code. And then we say target into directories on SAB image interface, uh, SAB image here. We get this from somewhere. Uh, maybe we just control this path. Maybe we don't. I need to guess. Um, and we say interface because we don't actually build it. So we, interface is more than enough to say everyone that uses SCB image must add this include path. Um, so a slightly more complex example would be this library here, which I will uh, would have liked to show later. Um, <coughs> this is the targeting libraries inheritance graph of a project I made. Uh, so I have this library here, libcmake server, which depends on boost, which depends on coroutine support in your compiler. And then I have some unit tests uh, where I use doc tests as my uh, unit test library. And then I have a small GUI, uh, which depends on Qt widgets and the KDE text editor widget. And using target link libraries, I say that libcmake server publicly depends on coroutines, on boost and boost system. And um, my test runner doesn't know anything about coroutines, boost, or boost system. It does only it, it only knows that it needs to depend on uh, libcmake server. So it privately depends on libcmake server. But because I have a public dependency here, all the uh, all the properties here get propagated down to the test runner. You can see here that uh, that it will link with a uh, libboost system with my. Uh, we'll add the coroutines flag and we'll add doc test uh, to its include path. And a similar thing happens here. So I just list all my direct dependencies here and everything <coughs> will get propagated just, just nicely. Is everything clear so far? Okay. So you may wonder about the name titling libraries. Um, Tangling libraries does not only add um, a graph to uh, an, um, an edge to your to your graph here. It accepts uh, targets, linker flags, and system libraries. So uh, you may also use targeting libraries with some system library, which CMake doesn't really know about, and just assumes, hey, I just saw this piece of string uh, which doesn't resemble a target. I just assume it's some library which I don't know about, and just say dash l. The this, this string here to GCC. Um, if you pass something with, with a dash in front of it, it assumes that it's a linker flag. Uh, and this way, I can pass flags to the, linker, uh, to the linker. In this case, I want to pass GC sections to the, to the linker. Important part here, by the way, is if you're using uh, toggling libraries with, uh, to pass linker flags, even if you use MSVC, you have to use the dash because the dash has a special meaning. Don't use a slash. Slash means it's a library <laughs> for some reason. Um, yeah. So as I said, the, the, the problem here is if if you pass something in here that is not a, that is not a system library uh, that is not a target, it assumes that it's a system library. We need to work around it for uh, somehow. So for this, CMAC has this special rule here. Um, that you can use the, the double colon uh, namespace thing, which is borrow from C++, uh, to explicitly tell CMake that this must be a target. The downside <coughs> here is that uh, the namespaces are just reserved for um, imported and aliased targets. You can't just, ex uh, you can't just add library, uh, code play, colon, colon, compute CBP. This will not work because it's reserved for uh, aliased and imported targets for some reason. Um, and what you should do instead is you create an alias target. So add library, uh, compute CPP, and then add library, co-play, colon, colon, compute CPP, alias, compute CPP. And then you use, use it like that. And if you have a typo in there, CMake will error and not the linker. 
saying that this library doesn't exist or universe it does exist and even weirder things will happen. So yeah, um, you should use colons in your target names um, or just define alias targets uh, and use, the, uh, use them throughout your project and not the target name itself. Um, yeah, so properties. I've talked about them a lot. Um, so what are properties? They are mostly just a string table attached on a various various entities in, in CMake. Uh, there is a whole bunch of different properties that you can set. Um, and the, the list is just too long, uh, too long to explain it. So just go to this website and scroll through the list. It's huge. Um, and most CMake commands are just syntactic sugar for setting or getting some property out of a target or directory or source file or whatever. Uh, so yeah, the entities with properties, this, those things here, usually just deal with source files, tests, and targets. Um, I have never set a, a property on the installed file, but apparently you can do that. Um, you have getters and setters, set property and get property for basically everything. This always works. Then you have special cases, set target properties, and so set source file properties, which has slightly uh, more convenient syntax for target and source files. Um, yeah, and what most properties have in common is that they have some mechanism to define a default state. Uh, in general, uh, you have something like cmax cx x standard, which is a global variable, which you can set. And when you add an executable after you set this variable here to 17, the property CXX standard gets initialized to CMake CXX standard here. And if you get um, if you get the property out of it after you call, this will return 17. Um, now, as a guideline, I would say that the, that you should do this just once in your top CMake lists in um, to make all. Uh, to make the initialization of all the targets the same throughout your project. Just changing CMAX CXX standard in the middle uh, in the middle of your code just leads to spaghetti code that nobody understands. Uh, and while I'm at it here, uh, CMAX CXX standard is a thing and you should use it and you should not pass dash std equals C++11 to your CMAX CXX flags because that only works in GCC and then MSVC users will com complain that their project doesn't build on Windows. Yes? If I have a, this thing as a sub-project, um, will this overwrite the root project standard and then suddenly I have a masking for C++17 in a later project defined in my root? Um, I don't think so. <coughs> yeah, so as I said here, you can set the language standard. Uh, which works for C++, works for C, works for basically every other language supported by CMake, which is CUDA, C Sharp, and Fortran. Um, there are a couple of more modules um, available online. Does not work for custom ones like I did for SQL, for example, because for some reason they hard coded the list of valid values in the C++ code. So if you want to add your own custom language, you have to fork CMake and add it to C++ source and compile CMake from source. Um, yeah, there are other very useful properties. I will only list some of them. So if you want to enable LTO, you don't have to enable dash s LTO on all your on, in your compiler flags. You can just say CMake interprocedural inter optimization is true, or only in release mode. You just add, uh, append the underscore release. Um, position independent code. Uh, if you want to say share code between your static and your shared library, this will be very useful. That uh, you just yeah just set this to true, and this will apply to all uh, um, targets that will follow later. Uh, you can also set even set an emulator for testing, which is an interesting feature I haven't used yet. Oh yeah, yes. Uh, just in one line, what's the benefit of position independent code? Um, position independent code means that, um, so when you have a shared library, um, it, uh, you the address of the so you have your you have a binary image and then it gets loaded into your into your executable, 
uh, and the address might change so every time you load your program. So the operating system loads this into some random address, and you you don't know you don't know the absolute addresses of everything in your library. So the compiler must generate relative addresses. This is called position independent code. Um, for static libraries, this doesn't apply because everything just happens statically and not dynamically at, at runtime when you load your library. So this is when uh, why you don't need position independent code on static libraries. Um, I hope this was somewhat right. Yeah. Yes. If, um, um, you've got like release and always. How do you? Um, is it possible to define different levels of granularity? Where like sometimes you want some optimization done for different kinds of um, different levels of build up to up from like debug to release and. Um, so CMake has four different build types. There are, okay, five. Um, debug, minimum size release, release with debug info and release, and the default one. So this one applies to everything, including the default one. And this one applies just if you pass CMake build type equals release. Um, if you want more, I have never tried that. I doubt it actually works. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you have the choice between four different ones. Um, yeah, any other questions? Okay. Um, so yeah, not only target targets can have properties. You can also set properties on directories, and <coughs> those are the functions that you usually use for that. Uh, Unfortunately, include directories is very popular. Um, you should only use them in your top CMake lists or somewhere, somewhere in your root, um, and preferably never because they just lead to spaghetti code. Because linked libraries will link some library to every single target. You, uh, you define your project and you usually don't want that. Likewise, with compile options and compile definitions and the include directories. Uh, and the other thing is, if you export your target, uh, the property is not attached to your target itself, but it's attached to the directory, so it does not get propagated to everything outside of your directory. So it's, it gets a real mess. Don't you don't do this. There are very few exceptions, um, <coughs> and one of them is say setting the warnings level. So. Uh, don't set CMAKE6X flex because because it's just a string without any meaning. Add compiler options modifies a list of compiler options. It makes much more sense in, in the internals of CMake. Um, and the other thing is that you don't want to have your warning level attached to your target. Uh, this makes not, not much sense in my opinion. So it's fine if you just say add compiler options, double your all extra pedantic on in your root CMake list and be done with it. This is fine. But don't use it for include directories or a link libraries or something like that. Yes? Are you suggesting that you only want to use them in directory level properties if it's something that applies to the whole project? Uh, as a guideline, yes. There are always exceptions. Um, depends on the use case. Um, so generate expressions. Um, when I say don't use CMAX X flex to do some modification of your flex, uh, the reason is that you can do some lazy evaluation and some uh, some branching based on some information you know at generation time. So sometimes it makes sense to lazy evaluate an expression. Um, for example, um, so I assume not everyone uses Compute CPP, so it is a short, short explanation. Um, when you run our compiler, so we have a two we have a two phase compilation model. So first of all, you compile your code with your actual GCC or Clang or MSVC, your host compiler, and then you run our compiler on the very same code. And uh, what our compiler does, it just um, gets out all the code uh, all the code at once and spits out a giant header file that you need to force include into your into your actual source file, and then you pass that down to your host compiler. So what happens here is when you call add SQL to target is that uh, this will invoke our compiler here on main.cpp. This will print out a header file. And then we tell uh, the host compiler, for example, GCC, to include our generated header file into the main.cpp and compile everything with a header. Uh, 
the problem here is that the user might want to write something like this. So add executable app, then he adds sickle to his target, and then he adds his include directories. But we don't know about this part here. We only have this function defined here. And we need, to, uh, we need a way to make this work. Um, and this is a case where I want to lazily evaluate an expression. Um, and for this, I can use the, those so-called generate expressions. They look like this. They always start with the dollar sign and the angle brackets. Uh, and if I want to implement, say, a condition, if I want to compile something only in Win32, I say angle bracket, then an another angle bracket where I put my condition in. In this case, is this variable defined here and evaluates to true? Then this gets evaluated. If I'm on Windows, this gets evaluated to true. And this means that this string here will, let, uh, will end up in my make file. If it's, if it's false, this will just evaluate to empty. Likewise on Unix. And yeah, this way I can implement my branching. So if I'm on, uh, if I'm on Windows, it will use the same first file. If I'm on Linux or Unix, I will use the second file. I have no idea what happens on SigWin. Um, you should, probably shouldn't try this at home. Um, but yeah, this way you can implement some conditional branching. When, for example, if I want to pass some flag to our compiler here, I can say compile language equals uh, a sickle, and if this is the case, pass this thing here to whatever compiles our, our source code right, in right now. Um, another interesting use case is the debugging of the property propagation. So as I said, um, all propag properties get propagated somehow, and you don't know what ends up in your target. But sometimes when you didn't did something wrong, you need to debug it. So you do need to know. Um, in this case, you say add executable, uh, like always. And then you add a custom target, print lips, for example, where I just call echo. And I have, have a generate expression that gets the linked libraries property of my app here. And this will only get evaluated after all the propagation stuff has been done. So if I call target link libraries after that um, and call a general and build system and call ninja with print lips, this library will still and it will show up here. Uh, I should also add that this is just an example. There is also um, a variable, I think it's called CMake, CMake enable debug propagation or something like that. Um, which automates this for you, but it also adds a lot of noise. So you may still want to do something like that if you have done something wrong, if you need to debug something. Um, yeah, then uh, back to my add signal to target example. Uh, so one of the, the challenges I have is, is that I have my device compiler, and I have a list of include directories which might get added later. And the device compiler needs to know which include directories the user passed to CMake. Uh, and I can do this with this giant gender expression here by saying I get the target property include directories of whatever I'm currently building. Then I, what, so what this returns is a CMake list. And I will join this list with tab and dash capital I. I have, this is, an ugly hack, I have to, I have to say, because the, um, because the tab here is just an unsupported thing. So CMake until I think 3.6 does not support expanding, um, expanding a list into a, space, into a space separated string. It will always end up with semicolons unless, uh, or, no, or no space at all unless I use tabs for some reason. They just didn't cover this case and I'm, uh, I'm making use of that. And that's why I'm saying, please upgrade your CMA, because I have to deal with this nonsense here. Um, because users just don't upgrade, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, here, as I say, I join my list of include directories with, uh, with space and capital I, and everything's fine. Yes? Do you know if the problem is to deprecate into the older databases, like, Um. I don't think they will ever deprecate that. Um, so it's definitely an anti-pattern most of the times to do that, but still people continue to use that and just will break everything. And... That sounds like that's your plan. <laughs> yeah. So as, as you will, you only need to jump through these hoops if, it's, if you're supporting old, older CMake. 
Yes. Uh, if you so use the set target twice, and then you don't need this, right? If everyone were to use the new. Um, if everyone would be using new CMIC, I wouldn't use the tab here. I would just, uh, so this is inside of um, at custom command. I would just add the flag uh, expand to list, uh, expand to spaces or whatever. There's a special flag for that now. They add it for the special case where you just need to expand something into dash i lit path, dash i path. Um, yeah. So that's basically all I have to say about the language itself. And now it's about packaging. So CMAC has both uh, mechanisms for importing and exporting packages. And if you want to use a package, um, ideally, the library writer has already provided a CMAC config file. Uh, in this case, all you need to do in your code is find package eigen, find package vulcan, find package qt5, Link it in, and you're done. Just no need to write anything, anything more involved. I'm maybe slightly lying here because uh, Vulkan doesn't have a config model; it's just part of the CMAX standard library. And yeah, um, but yeah, note that providing a CMAX config file does is, uh, does not mean that the library writer itself has to use CMAX. For example, Qt5. Does, uh, doesn't use CMake, they use uh, they use their own system QMake, but they still install um, a config file for all the users that use uh, that uh, they use CMake, so they can easily use the library. So in my opinion, <coughs> since um, since CMake is by far the most popular system, uh, this is a very bad thing to do by the library author because even though they they, they don't have to use uh, CMake, they can still use their older tools or make files or whatever. They should still make it easy for all the other people that use CMake. To include it. Unfortunately, they don't always do this. And in this case, uh, we need to write a find module by ourselves. Uh, and the find modules roughly look like this. So in this case, I am wrapping the Microsoft guideline support library. And what I'm doing here is, first of all, I check if, I'm, if I've am if i already looked for the package. So if I've already a target called msgsl, gsl, do nothing, just return. Then I include this uh, handy little macro here, find package channel standard args, uh, that does all the error checking for me and prints out a nice status message if my library is found, like the one you've already, uh, you've, you're known, uh, you already know. And then, uh, I just look for the header here, gsl slash slash gsl. So just type in what I would expect on my include path. So I already usually would usually write in, uh, hash include uh, gsl slash gsl. So I write this down. Um, store the result in the msgsl include dir variable. And then I say find package handle standard args for the package msgsl, which has the required args msgsl include directory. And if this variable is empty or not defined, this will throw an error saying this package could not be found. And CMake will, uh, will, will quit and give you a nice error message. Uh, if it has been found, we can add an interface imported library here called msgsl colon colon dsl. So I'm using namespaces. Um, and then I set the target property interface include directories to msgsl include directory. And since it's a C11 library, I also say everyone that uses this library must enable C11 support or higher. Everything clear so far? Gordon? One, one question. Is it possible if, if you're using some other library and you come across one of these find modules, is there any way to make to ask the find module what target it returns or what it makes available like without looking at the um, no, because there is, so this is the way you should write it. Not everyone does it, mm -hmm. especially the, the target thing is a very recent addition. That's that the modern CMAC part. Um, when you're looking at older or unmaintained modules, you often see that it just defines a set of variables like msgsl include directory or msgsl library if it was a compiled library. And then you need to pass those, those variables around. This is what makes it so messy. Um, yeah, so if you look at the neo maintained CMake modules, you will find uh, imported targets like this. But there is no standard way. 
um, there is just a guideline on the CMake documentation how sh you should write this if you want to contribute to CMake, but not everyone follows this. So, yeah. any other questions? Yes. Uh, must that GSL, the column called GSL, must that namespace be mapped to what's in the file GSL slash GSL? Yeah. This is completely separate from C++. Well, maybe you should do this, <laughs> but you don't have to. Um, if you have a compiled library, in this case, the Intel threading building blocks, it pretty much looks the same. So I look for my target. If it already exists, do nothing. Include find package has style arcs. I look for my path. What's new here is I look for the library called tbb. So the file is called libtbb.so on my system. So I look for tbb. And Windows is probably called tbb.dll or .lib. So tbb. It also has a second library called tbb malloc. So I already, uh, also look for this. And then I say find package handle standard arcs with those three variables here I'm looking for. And then I add my library, tbb, tbb. I don't know if it's a static or shared library. I don't care. So I say unknown. And, and it's imported because, yeah, I don't own this thing. Um, and then I set the target property. I set the importer location of my tbb library to the variable here I just found, uh, I just found here. The rest is the same. I say I set the include directory to tbb, to tbb include use, and it's a C11 library. tbb malloc uh, looks pretty much the same. So I also set the importer location to a tbb malloc library. The difference here is that tbb malloc depends on tbb, so I just set interface link libraries to tbb here. So when you're trying to find package tbb and directly just say tbb malloc, it will also pull in tbb because tbb malloc depends on tbb. And it will also pull in the include directory here since it's an interface property. Everything clear? OK. This also works for executables. So as an example here, I have Clang format. I should add that this is an example. Clang exports a config file. You usually don't, ha uh, don't have to write something like this. You just say find package Clang and then say call Clang dash format. Uh, so that's just this thing here in the scripts. And you should be fine unless you have a broken distribution package, in which case you may have to write this regardless. Um, yeah, so pretty much looks the same. Uh, I don't find uh, I don't find a library. I don't find a path. I find a program called client format stores in the variable here, and the rest stays the same. I add an imported executable here and set the imported location to a client format executable. The rest stays the same. Yeah. So now if we've written three different find modules, and we can use them now in our project. So a simple project might look like this. We start with CMake minimum version required, U1312. We create a new project, Hello World, with the version number one. Uh, we append the directory of all our find modules to the CMake module path. So I've written this thing is that. <laughs> Yeah, it works now. Whatever. So I have written cmake slash clang format dot cmake everywhere. So er all my find modules are in the cmake subdirectory. So I append it to my cmake module path so it will be found. Then I can just call find package like I always do. So find package msgsl. I want this package. If this doesn't exist, give me an error. Is so it the same for tbb? The same for clang format. Then I add my executable like always and say target link libraries, which uh, app and app uses msgsl and the tbb library. And then I can also define a custom target that runs client format on my file if I want to. So this is how you import packages in CMake. Are there any questions? OK. Exporting packages. So. When you are the library author and you're using CMake, you probably also should export a config file and not ship a find module or something like that, because this will just uh, put 
additional burden on the user and this is just unnecessary because you are the library author, you know best what your, your, your library needs on your system. Uh, and you do this with three steps. So first of all, use target properties, use modern CMAC. Then you install your export set, so the set of everything of your library interface and everything that your library needs. And then you write your config file where you, st uh, where you state everything, uh, all the dependencies of your libraries in your target system. Um, as an example here, Slip CMake Server again, it's a library I'm writing to query CMake using server mode. I've written, I've, it's currently on hold. I haven't contrib uh, written on a, written, didn't write so much in the last couple of days, and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it requires C20 as supported by Clank Trunk. Um, it also requires the coroutines as my dependencies. I have boost, I have doc test only for my tests, so I don't install doc test. No user of mine doesn't want need doc test. And my goal is that users should be able to write this. So when they start their project, they should be able to write find package CMake server, targeting library CMake server, and should, they should be done. And everything sh should be pulled in by this single call here. Um, and I started with the directory tree here. So this is my general <coughs> project layout. I have my CMake uh, module here where I check for coroutine support. I have my tests here and my source file here. And the important part here is that the include directory tries to tries to resemble the include uh, the include tree structure um, in your target system. This makes the installation of your library much easier once you or once you package it up. Um, so yeah, in my root CMake list, I start like always minimum required version three twelve. Um, I append the path of my find coroutines to my CMake module path. Then I add this include general export header macro, which I will need later. And then I set the CMake visibility or the visibility preset to hidden. So everyone who's working on Windows is probably familiar with DL export and DL import. And the difference on Linux is just that the default is is that every symbol is visible by default and exported by default. And you can just uh, set the default, uh, the default of your visibility to hidden and it will more or less behave like, like Windows does. Uh, and the nice thing about this is that it makes your library smaller and uh, there are less symbols to export. Uh, and LTO usually works better if you ex export less, less symbols. Um, yeah, and then I add my subdirectory containing my, my shared library. I enable testing and then I add my unit tests. Um, so this is the packaging part. Um, first of all, I use some macro here to uh, generate a small configuration file for that defines the comp compatibility of my library. So in this case, I say every Mayer version is compatible. So if someone has CMake Server 1.2 installed and uh, I'm looking for CMake Server 1.1. This is also fine because it's the same major version. Um, so we'll find this instead and not give an error. Um, then I configure my file. I'll just copy the CMake Server config file to my binary directory. The CMake Server config file contains all the dependency information like my project depends on boost, my project depends on coroutines. Um, and then I just need to install uh, install everything. So uh, not only do I copy my CMake server config to my build directory, I also install it to this directory here, lib slash CMake server. And this is one of the special directories CMake looks in when you're calling find package. This entire list available in the documentation where, where CMake just lists, I'm looking here for a config file. Um, yeah, and after that, uh, I export my library interface called CMake server into a file cmakeserver.cmake and give it a namespace and then I install the export set. So it's a lot of boilerplate. Um, but 
yeah, that's, that's probably the most generic way of doing that. Um, so yeah, the CMAKE server config contains uh, my dependency information. So I don't use find package in there. I use this macro called find dependency. So here I'm saying I want to uh, add my installed find coroutines.cmake to my path. And then I look for boost, where I'm looking is more specifically looking for system and thread, and then I'm looking for coroutines. And then I'm including the export set I just installed here. Then my source CMake lists. Yeah, this is just me building my package. So I'm finding my package boost. Depends on system thread, file system, depends on coroutines. Uh, I add my library, CMake server just currently just has one source file. Um, then I have added my alias here so I can use my namespace and don't and prevent any stupid errors from typos. Uh, then I generate my export header in my binary directory. That's another that's another thing that I've seen a few times. Your generated files belong in a build directory, not in a source directory. This will just mess up your Git repository and uh, also your build scripts. So please keep your generated files in a build directory. So I'm doing exactly that. Um, I generate my export header in my ncmx server slash export. Um, and then I define my include directories. In this case, I say, while I'm building it, my include directories are in slash include and my binary include directory, which contains the export header. But once I install it, I stuff everything into the include directory and I just have this one uh, in, uh, include directory to add. And I depend on C++20. This was added in CMake 3.12 that I can actually write C++20 here. Um, and then I say, my CMake server library depends on system, thread, file system, and coroutines. And then I need to install my library. So I add install my CMake server library, add it to the export set CMake server, which I defined here, or export and install here. Uh, I put all my executables and DLLs in the bin directory. I put all my shared objects into lib. I install the entire include directory. So in this case, I just can just copy the entire directory without any changes because I, re uh, I uh, tried to reassemble the install, uh, the install uh, tree in my, um, when it comes to my headers. And then finally, I also need to install my export header and put it inside of my include directory. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty much done with my talk with just the time say. Okay, um, so just a rush through of, uh, of tooling support that's already in there. If you want to, uh, to use client tidy or something like include what you use, you can usually do something like this. You export, you say, CMA export compile commands, which ex exports um, adjacent file containing all the compiler invocations and all the linker flags and not the linker flags, the, the warning flags, the include directories and all the other compile options. And then a tool like Clang Tidy can read this JSON file with a P flag, and then can enable all the checks you want. And this is how you do Clang Tidy uh, with um, with CMake. And this will cause Clang Tidy to run alongside of your compiler. Whenever you run, you recompile something in your source code. Clang Tidy will run. Uh, will, will run. It will look like uh, Clang Tidy is just part of your compiler. And you get additional warnings. And the same is true for include what you use. There's also um, link what you use, but this is more fragile. I've never really gotten it to work properly. It always prints too much out. And yeah, um, the cute code generator. So if you don't, uh, if you've ever heard complaints about about mock and RCC and the other code generators, it's usually when you are writing CMake, just those those three lines of code that you need to add at the top of your CMake. So you just set the uh, enable auto mock, auto RCC, or auto USC, depending on what cute features you use, and you're done. 
Um, yes, yeah, so yeah, link what you used, I already told you about. Uh, setting the R path for builds. Uh, who has been bitten by LDL library path? Everyone. So CMake has this feature that you can just set the R path in of your library or, or executable um, in your build directory to something you specify here. And here I can just say, I want to add the file, the competency, the path to competency CVP to my R path, and I don't need to specify LDL library path anymore. The interesting thing here is that CMake has a distinction between CMake build, build R path and install R path. So even though I specified this here, this won't get, this string uh, containing this, uh, this path here won't, uh, won't get installed. So once you call CMake install, uh, this path will disappear in the executable. So a very useful feature while you're writing software. Uh, yeah. So another thing I was working on, the SQL language modules. Uh, this is currently highly experimental. I haven't had time to work on it. But uh, if we look at, say, CUDA here, uh, so CMake has first-class CUDA support. If you want to write, uh, write CUDA code with CMake, you say enable the language CXX, enable CUDA, then you have at your, at your executable here, and then you have your .cu file. And the CMake will auto just automatically invoke um, NVCC. Um, yeah. Uh, the problem with uh, the problem is uh, that, or the problem with our modules is that we don't have first-class support in CMake. We don't have any code contributed to CMake that enables SQL. Uh, so we have to ship um, a module containing all the functions to with the add SQL to, to, to target thing to make this work. And there's just additional code that the user has to write, and this is a bit brittle and not ideal. Could be better. Um, so I've gone ahead and written some modules, and they are also available on GitHub here, where I uh, I've already also packaged up in Conan. So all you need to do to get started with SQL and CompuCVP is you write this, those four lines of code. You require CompuCVP in the version 0.9. You want to have a you have a CMake project here, and then you in your project here you enable. Um, you find package compute CPP. This will enable the SQL language, which I have written. And when you add your executable here, app my parallel code CPP, this will automatically invoke uh, our compiler. And uh, it, it's generally just yeah, those four lines of code, and you're good to go. So it's even shorter than CUDA. Uh, yeah, with this, uh, I am at the end of my talk. Um, are there any questions? Yes. How does it detect that it's a SQL? Um, so in short, everything I've done here relies on internal APIs. Um, it's therefore a bit experimental. I should probably upstream it to CMake at some point. But uh, what CMake does is that you have a set a variable, and you set a list of all the file extensions. Um, and then I say, just say the file extensions for SQL is .cpp. So I just override the default for CPP. Um, so every CPP file gets viewed as a SQL file and will run through our compiler. I've just said that you, um, so you, you can have both. Um, you can either say, I want to opt in into SQL and I will only want to set specific files to, you, to use our device compiler, or can I use it the other way around? So this is the other way around. This will just call, um, our compiler on every CPP file unless you tell it otherwise. Um, yeah, so you can override the default for file extensions. Any other questions? By the way, he's not using CMake for their project. He's not. Yeah, it's quite a few. What are you using? Okay, so you only you Windows only. Write the sort of build description file in Lua, and then you run Freemake and it generates it spits out a DC or whatever. 
There were some attempts to add Lua to CMake, but um, I think they were, the, the first implementation was rejected because it was just a messy implementation called, and so the Lua called it CMake and not the other way around. And I think the idea is not completely dead, but it's not actively developed. Okay. 